passed the stimulus bill approved by Congress. We'll break down what it means for us. And a local yoga studio keeping people active through online classes. And it's all thanks to their new Instagram page. Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. New at noon, the San Antonio City Council receiving an update on how the coronavirus pandemic is impacting the Alamo City. The mayor has instituted a stay safe work from home order for seven days, and the council is expected to extend that. Garrett Berger is live outside of city council chambers. So, Garrett, you're hearing that this extension could come at a cost, right? Well, we are expecting this to be basically a formality of a vote. The mayor had already put April 9th as the date in his order, noting that it was subject to city council approval. And while it's not a direct cost, we are hearing that this COVID-19 pandemic is already wreaking havoc on San Antonio's economy. From what we've heard out of city staff presenting some preliminary projections today, we're looking at possible double digit unemployment for this month, higher than the great, higher than San Antonio peak unemployment during the Great Recession and the city budget also suffering with possibly 110 to almost 160 million dollars. We're looking at that as the impact on the budget for just this year and who knows how long the recovery efforts could go on for. So it's still not entirely clear how bad this pandemic will affect San Antonio but we do know it is not good and it is not going away. Live at City Hall, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. The Toyota plant here in San Antonio has extended its temporary shutdown. That's not only due to the coronavirus pandemic, but also a decline in vehicle demand. That's according to a statement just released by Toyota North America. The plant on the city's south side will remain closed through April 17th and is scheduled to resume production on Monday, April 20th. The statement says that the service parts and logistics will continue to operate. The company will continue to monitor the situation and extend the closing if needed. Governor Greg Abbott will be having a press conference this afternoon to provide an update on the coronavirus pandemic in the Lone Star State. Representatives from the Texas Department of State Health Services and the Texas Division of Emergency Management will also be in attendance. The press conference is to give an update on Texas's efforts to combat COVID-19 and is scheduled to happen around 2 p.m. at the state capitol in Austin. But you can watch it live right here on KSAT 12 and online at KSAT.com. Meantime, the city of San Marcos is joining many of its counterparts. It will be implementing a stay home work safe order tonight at 11. However, this order is different than the others because it includes a curfew for people in the city. People won't be allowed on the street between the hours of 11 p.m. and 4 a.m unless they are going to work at an essential business. Law enforcement officials are going to be able to issue citations to anyone who violates that order. An Air Force trainee at JBSA Lackland is now being isolated after testing positive for COVID-19. Air Force officials say that the trainee is the first person to test positive for the virus at a military basic training. 40 other trainees are under quarantine for coming into contact with that trainee and 600 total are in a quote, restriction of movement status. Across Bear County, here are the stats. Of 447 people who have been tested, 84 have now tested positive for COVID-19. Three people have died in the county. Health officials say nearly one third of all positive cases are due to community spread. That means they cannot trace the source of the contact. We're expecting to get the latest numbers later on today, and we will update you on air and on KSAT.com. School districts across Texas are asking lawmakers to allow parents to pick up free and reduced price meals for their kids during the closures. Right now, schools are allowed to hand out curbside meals if their kids are present. But some are saying that it goes against public health recommendations. Parents and districts are saying that taking their kids could increase the potential of exposure by going to get food. It's an issue staying emotionally stable and physically active with these stay home work safe orders in full effect. It can be difficult. All gyms are closed and some don't have online memberships or equipment to get started. Yeah, although temporarily shut down, one local yoga studio is using Instagram to offer their services and support their employees. Alicia Barrera has the full story. 
yoga. It's a physical practice that can help clear your mind, strengthen your body, cleanse your spirit, and even create community. It is such a form of connection to the people around you, understanding that we're really all in this together, that no problem is bigger or smaller than the other. Although closed since March 18th, Black Swan Yoga San Antonio is doing their best to provide for its customers and instructors who are currently without classes to teach. Right when we closed, we, um, a couple days later, we started the live streaming on our YouTube page and um, that was working out really well. That's until COVID-19 restrictions became more strict. When that happened, we didn't want to risk our teachers coming in even one by one. So they made the move to Instagram Live with classes ranging from beginner, prenatal, or options for more experienced yogis. Our focus right now is to offer free yoga for everyone and as much normalcy as we can. Normalcy for their students, as well as teachers who depend in great part on the donations. And all of these donations are 100% supporting our teachers. It's the best and the most we can do at right now with the circumstance that we're all in. The mobile option makes donating easy through the link in their Instagram bio. It also allows for social distancing and for first timers to try something new while stuck at home. It's been really nice actually to see the people that have brought yoga into their life for the first time during this time. And hopefully we'll see them again soon when we do open our doors. In case you miss one of their many Instagram lives, you can always replay them. Just click the link in their bio and scroll down to previous broadcasts. Black Swan Yoga San Antonio is located near downtown and they don't have a reopening date just yet. They do hope it's soon and they'll be sure to announce that across all their social media platforms. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Mere hours after the Senate passed a historic package, for aid to combat the economic effects of COVID-19, the U.S. is now reporting record high unemployment claims. And some financial experts caution that things could get worse. ABC's Alex Perche has more from Washington. This morning, new signs the U.S. economy is slowing down as a result of the global pandemic. More than 3.2 million filing for unemployment in a week, a number larger than the population of Chicago, a historic high. Though financial markets expecting the record filings, taking them in stride. Many of the unemployed, like Jamie and Christina Gable, they have two kids, one with autism. Both parents losing their jobs over the last few weeks. Across the country, similar stories. How am I going to make rent? How, um, you know, bills, you know, student loans? Just the nine days before this shutdown happened, we made about $32,000. That's kind of our norm in that stretch to zero. The Trump administration responding to the report with defiance. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin saying over the phone on CNBC, the latest weekly unemployment claims are, quote, irrelevant. You know, to be honest with you, I, I just think these numbers right now are not relevant. And, you know, whether they're bigger or smaller in, in the short term, you know, I mean, obviously there are people who have jobless claims. And again, the good thing about this bill is the president is protecting those people. Last night, some hope from the Senate. The, the bill is passed. A $2 trillion stimulus package, including $250 billion in checks going directly to struggling families. Those making $75,000 or less will receive $1,200. Married couples who make up to $150,000 getting $2,400 and $500 for each child. Those checks heading out as early as April 6. Experts saying if you file your taxes electronically, the stimulus payout will come quickest through direct deposit. The Gables wondering if the massive relief bill is big enough. Not enough gonna... for rent and mortgage. It's like giving a tic-tac to a whale. Speaker Pelosi says she will push the bill through the House tomorrow. And in the private sector, potentially more jobs on the horizon. Ford announcing it plans to reopen production in key North American plants beginning early April. Workers wondering if that's too soon and if it's safe. Financial experts cautioning even the record high unemployment claims aren't showing the full extent of the economic damage. I think we all have to take that number with a grain of salt. I believe the unemployment numbers are a lot, lot worse than that uh, because they are only using the numbers through March 12th. And as you know, most of the people who have laid off have been since March 12th. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Top stories we're following today. The Texas Board of Pardons and Parole has denied parole for the man found guilty of being an accomplice in the killing of three law enforcement officers in Atascosa County back in 1999. Now, this comes after the Atascosa County Sheriff launched a campaign aimed at blocking the parole back in January. Kenneth Vodachowski was found guilty of capital murder and sentenced to death by lethal injection for the deaths of two deputies and one DPS trooper. 
His conviction was later overturned, and he pleaded guilty to three 30-year sentences to run concurrently. He was up for parole this month, but the Texas board received more than 2,000 parole protest letters, so they denied the request. Spurs guard Marco Bellinelli has nothing but love for Spurs staffers during these tough times. Larry Ramirez will have that later on in sports. And if you're sitting at home right now, you could fill out your 2020 census, the Census Bureau extending the amount of time you have to complete this questionnaire. We are in some tough times, but if you're looking for extra work right now, there are several businesses around San Antonio that are hiring. That's right. HEB, Amazon and Walmart looking for some uh, people to work for them, the biggest corporations in the Alamo City. Some of those positions include curbside pickup and delivery and help in stocking stores and warehouses. Some area hospitals also looking for extra hands on deck. Methodist Healthcare and San Antonio State Hospital are looking for nurses and physicians, but they're also looking for non-medicine related positions as well, such as food workers and custodians. To see a full list, just head over to ksat.com, and of course we will continue to update it as more job openings become available. So many folks stuck at home, and we might be looking for some things to do to pass the time. Absolutely, which is why the U.S. Census Bureau is telling you to fill out your 2020 census. The invitation to take the questionnaire has already been sent out to houses in Bear County, and the Census Bureau is now extending the time to fill out the census. You now have until May 28th to respond before they send representatives to your front door. And right now, only about 18% of everyone in Bear County filled out the census. So... If you don't want a representative knocking on your door during this pandemic, you need to fill it out now. You can complete the questions online by phone or by mailing it in. That's pretty serious. All right. That would kind of blow the whole self quarantine idea, I right? Know, yeah. So, yeah, just <laughs> fill it out and send it in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, it's 77 degrees at 1214. Katie, it looks a little cloudy out there. Uh, yeah, we've had some low clouds around this morning, a little bit of patchy fog, certainly not as much fog though this morning as what we saw yesterday. Those clouds will continue to break up a bit as we head into the afternoon, and it's going to be overall just another warm and humid day for us. The aquifer down two tenths of a foot since yesterday, but hold on to your hats. Look at this pollen count. Seven allergens. That's that's bad enough, right? But look at the oak number, 24,100. That is the highest oak reading we have had in several years. So it is brutal. We are in the thick of oak season right now, unfortunately. A little shot at rain on Saturday morning to maybe wash a little bit of that out, but rain chances don't look great over the next week or so. We'll take a look at your full forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes. We here at Case at 12 want to thank all of our community members helping during this pandemic. Absolutely. This is why we are giving a big Case at salute to healthcare workers on the front lines. Here are some of the nurses in BAMC's Labor and Delivery Department unit. Check them out. This is the emergency room team at Southwest General. We want to thank you for all that you do. If you want to send in a picture of your team or your healthcare worker, just head over to ksat.com and give us your pictures. We love seeing these faces because we know how hard they're working. There are, there are medical health care workers walking around right now with bruises on their faces sure, from wearing masks uh, on their faces all day long. Yes. And uh, we really have to tip our hats. They are because making big sacrifices for we, sure. We appreciate that. And we know that here in Bear County, we're only at the beginning yeah. of what could be a very disastrous situation. So while we have the opportunity, thank you. Thank you. All right. Some pretty good weather out there, Katie. It's kind of cloudy, but hey, it's 77 degrees. It's very spring like out there <laughs> and we'll see some clearing as we get into the afternoon. We've uh, seen a lot of sun the past couple of days and that will continue today before we pick up a few more clouds as we get into the day tomorrow. But a nice breeze out there. A uh, live cam is doing a little shake in this afternoon as we look at the quarry and things do look kind of hazy. Our sensor at the airport is reading mostly cloudy skies. We saw a pretty steady deck of some low clouds build in early this morning 
but that is really quickly starting to break up here. As you can see on our visible satellite picture, this is a loop over the past three hours and we've had plenty of clouds in and around Bear County. But look at this. That cloud deck is rapidly retreating off to the northwest, so plenty of sunshine on the way this afternoon. If you're off down to the southeast of town, Floresville, Pleasanton over to Seguin, you've uh, already started to clear out. Look at the coastal bend. Uh, clear skies already this afternoon. There is that cloud deck off to the west of 35 for the most part up in the hill country. That cloud deck will continue to kind of shrink and retreat, and that means a lot of sunshine for everyone as we get into the afternoon. We're You've already cleared out. You've seen a couple hours of sunshine. Temperatures are already in the upper 80s in Beeville, 82 in Pleasanton, 81 in Carrizo Springs. Everyone else that's been stuck under the clouds for the past couple of hours. Temperatures are still in the 70s, even the upper 60s there in the hill country. A nice breeze out of the southeast that has pumped that surface moisture back in. So it is humid out there, and that's not going to be changing until we get into the weekend. So the humidity uh, will be around for the next couple of days, but that breeze is really nice. Sustained winds around 10 to 15 miles per hour will be in place generally uh, for the rest of the day, even into the late afternoon, early evening hours. So while it will be another warm day, high temperatures, upper 80s, low 90s. Uh won't be too uncomfortable out there mainly because we'll have that breeze keeping this warm, humid air moving around for the rest of the day. Here's a look at your dew points. Again, this is the measure of the humidity in the air. The higher that these numbers are, typically we top them off in the 70s, and that's where some of us are this afternoon. The higher those numbers are, the more humid or sticky it feels outside. So we've got high dew point numbers generally in the upper 60s and low 70s out there, and you can think those winds right off the Gulf of Mexico for that. So as we head into the day tomorrow, dew points will stay high in the 60s and low 70s, so in muggy territory. As we get into the weekend, though, a nice drop in our dew point numbers. We'll have some drier air move in behind a Pacific cool front that will help to drop our humidity a little bit. Won't make things a whole lot cooler out there, but this will bring in some nice drier air. Dew points rebound back into muggy territory on Monday, and then a second frontal boundary looks to move through early next week to drop humidity once again. So we do have a little back and forth coming right now, but surface high pressure has begun to move off into the Gulf of Mexico. That's what has kicked in that south southeast wind at the surface and has really built the humidity in over the past 24 hours or so, but we'll see plenty of sunshine this afternoon. Tomorrow morning, very similar to this morning, patchy fog possible, cloudy skies as well. A little bit of clearing tomorrow afternoon like what we've seen the past couple of days, but I do think we'll have generally more clouds around Friday afternoon as a low pressure system and cold front approaches from the west. This front will move through Saturday morning with a slim chance of rain, but what it really does for us is bring in that nice drier air. So I do want to show you future cast a uh, closer view here really quickly as we get into early Saturday. You see not a whole lot of rain with this frontal boundary. Unfortunately, here in San Antonio and along I 35, just a 20% chance of a shower or very weak thunderstorm. As we get into Saturday afternoon, a slightly better chance of a quick hitting passing shower down on the coastal bend, but here in town, we'll just keep you at a 20% chance for an early morning shower uh, in the pre-dawn hours of Saturday morning uh, and then through about mid morning on Saturday. Rest of the weekend looks great though. We'll have that drier air moving in high temperatures each day near 80 degrees. It's going to be very comfortable this weekend as compared to the very muggy air we have in place today and tomorrow. Early next week, another chance at some showers and we've got the latest drought monitor in today. I'll be giving you a look at that in the next half hour guys. All right, here comes summer. You can smell it in the air. Meanwhile, it is supposed to be Major League Baseball's opening day, Larry, but not how's so that much. Out? Yeah, yeah, all 30 teams were scheduled to play today. The Astros would have started at home. The Rangers would have started on the road. But of course, Major League Baseball is suspended. So once the season does start, what kind of season does the commissioner hope to get in? Plus, the Dallas Cowboys, their Hot Boys members, helping out first responders. Coming up. Uh, but the one thing I know for sure is baseball will be back. Whenever it's safe to play, we'll be back. Our fans will be back. Our players will be back. That's MLB Commissioner Rob Manford ahead of what was supposed to be opening day in big board sports. Like many other athletes, Spurs shooting guard Marco Bellinelli is quarantined while the world fights COVID-19. He's here in San Antonio while his father, mother, and two brothers are quarantined in the hardest hit area in the world when it comes to the coronavirus, his home country of Italy. He told USA Today Sports that it's just crazy and like a movie. 
Belly says he's been in contact with his family through Facebook Live and that everyone is doing well. Now here in town, Markle told Euro Hoops that he and his girlfriend Martina have stayed in the residence and he was quick to also praise the Spurs staff. Quote, I'm going out only to take my dog for a walk. We do our grocery shopping online and I'm working out at home. I also want to thank the Spurs staff that is absolutely present and ready to accommodate our every need by bringing us food and all the necessary tools to continue our sports routine as much as possible in quote the agent for Minnesota Timberwolves Carl Anthony Towns told ESPN that his father Carl senior did test positive for COVID-19 and is recovering well while finishing up his quarantine last week Towns parents were not feeling well so Towns and his sister encouraged them to see a doctor Towns mother got so bad she's in a medically induced coma and on a ventilator Sixers big man Joel Embiid put aside his rivalry with Towns and tweeted we're with you brother We'll keep praying. Today would have been opening day Major League Baseball, but of course it's wiped out because of COVID-19. Houston would have opened with the Rangers, with the Angels at home, and the Rangers were scheduled to face the Mariners in Seattle. With no idea when the season will start, MLB Commissioner Rob Manford was asked how many games would he like to see once play does start up. I think we need to have um, a regular season uh, with a credible number of games. Um, I, I think we should have a postseason format that focuses on providing the most possible entertain, entertaining product uh, to our fans at a very, very difficult time in our history. And uh, overall, I think our goal is to play as many baseball games as we possibly can, given uh, the limitations uh, associated with the public health concerns. Turning to football, Dallas Cowboys defender Marcus Lawrence and Jalen Smith decided to help as we all go through the same thing together worldwide battling the COVID-19 pandemic. The Hot Boys charitable arm helping feed more than 500 this past weekend through their food truck that includes first responders who are on the front line of the fight. So many people that need help. And, and for us, we're just trying to give back and support, uh, handing out over 500 meals today. You know, our community can crash, uh, you know, and, um, you know, the type of situation we could be in then, you know, when we don't have places to go eat, you know, just being able to, you know, give back to the community and, and, and make everybody understand about, you know, giving back. DeMarcus says it was his daughter, Mariah, who encouraged him to do something during this crisis, saying this is bigger than football and indeed it is and it's great to see the hot boys helping out it is and it's also great to see them doing something constructive to keep their minds <laughs> occupied during this crazy time yeah you got it all right larry thank you all right working at home causing people to upgrade their home workstations we're going to see how that is sparking business here in texas Nationwide, the fight against the coronavirus is intensifying. More than 25 states across the country are placing new restrictions on their residents as the number of cases continue to rise. Nearly 70,000 people are positive and more than 1,000 people have died. We're also getting a startling look at the struggles facing hospital workers on the front lines. ABC's Mark Stewart has the latest from New York. Scenes of desperation inside hospitals across the U.S., including Elmhurst Hospital in Queens, New York. At least 13 people have died here in just 24 hours. All the patients in this room, all the feet that you see, they all have COVID. And this is only one of the several rooms. Dr. Colleen Smith sharing her story with ABC News and the New York Times, including this moment when a shipment of five ventilators arrive. Yet she says many more are needed. And so the concern is that these all these ventilators that we're told are coming but haven't really started to materialize in large numbers are they really coming in new york the governor says while only 15 percent of cases have required hospitalization so far the state is anticipating 140,000 people will be hospitalized warning he still doesn't have enough beds or life-saving ventilators Hospitals are doing what they can, including in the Detroit area, where operating rooms are being converted into special COVID-19 units. The pandemic pummeling America with nearly 70,000 cases in the U.S. alone. 
In Missouri, five members of the same family all testing positive for COVID-19. The mother and father still in the hospital. In New Jersey, former lacrosse player Jack Allard now on a ventilator in a medically induced coma. He's just 25 years old. Jermaine Miller from New York died just days before his 45th birthday. A husband and father from New York, his wife is heartbroken. While New York's governor is expressing some optimism, social distancing measures may be working. Experts say caution is needed. Well, first of all, I think we have to be very, very cautious when we interpret his comment yesterday. And even he said it sounds too good to be true. And overnight, ABC News learning a member of Mount Sinai's nursing staff here in New York passed away from COVID-19. Mark Stewart, ABC News, New York. Meantime, the stock market is gaining back more ground after the Senate unanimously passed that stimulus package, which went through Congress. Take a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. It is up 800 points right now, about 4% on the day. It is a good sign. Meantime, James Dyson, who is the owner of the company that you might know for vacuum cleaners and hand dryers. Now, he says that they have designed a new ventilator in just 10 days. He's announced plans to make 15,000 of these things to help fight the coronavirus pandemic. 10,000 of them are going to stay in the United Kingdom, which is where that company is located. But 5,000 ventilators will be donated to international causes. The company spokesperson says these ventilators should be ready by early April. Dyson says the machines can be manufactured quickly, and that is key as demand continues to rise. Heroes on the front lines in the battle against coronavirus can get a free pair of shoes from Crocs. It's a new program called A Free Pair for Healthcare. Individual healthcare workers can go to Crocs.com to place their free orders of classic Crocs or Crocs at work. Shipping is free, too. The website opens every day at 11 o'clock San Antonio time and will stay open until the day's stock runs out. With so many counties and states issuing stay at home orders, computer stores like Best Buy are seeing a huge spike in business. As KPRC's Bill Barajas reports, folks are finding out that their work at home office may not be up to par with technology to be as productive at home. Well, if you're working from home tonight, just as millions of Americans are across the country, you'll need things to set up your in-home office or classroom for your child. Things like a laptop or a hotspot and tech stores across the country are doing what they can to help you get started. It's very important that you guys keep the six, the four to six feet. Times are changing and Houstonians are adapting. You know what? Many rush into tech stores across the city. I appreciate it. Thank you. Frank Farnell was at Micro Center looking to pick up a few spare parts. So just trying to collect a couple of things to get some laptops going. Um, like I said, I work at a hospital, so some nurses are just trying to we're just trying to get everyone up and running. Yeah. Uh, trying to work remote, try to keep this exposure to a minimum. Micro Center GM Stephen Miller says items are flying off the shelves as folks start making the transition from work office to home office. Primarily it's laptops, desktops, computer monitors, streaming equipment such as webcams. And it's not just adults getting adjusted, children are doing the very same. Mauricio Villegas was hoping to buy his daughter a new laptop so she can keep up with her school assignments. She's 11 years old, she's in sixth grade and you know, she's doing really good in school and she needs to keep up with her grades. Best Buy is also working to help its customers by offering free curbside service. Anyone looking to speak to a store associate is allowed to do so as long as they practice social distancing. Best Buy is also advising folks to take advantage of their in-home advisor service. We would set up a video chat or an over-the-phone conference call meeting. Assess all your needs, whether it's for appliances, your home office, your home automation system. We're able to design with you over the phone or through video, send you a quote, go over it with you, and still manage your order afterwards. On top of helping people with their technology needs, Micro Center says they've actually been able to hire several people who were laid off previously. They also have special hours for seniors on Tuesdays, those hours from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. In Houston, Bill Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Live look outside with live cam. It's a little bit murky out there, but uh, 
you know, another warm one on tap. It's been a string of summer like days here, Katie. Yeah, and where we are right now, mid to upper 70s, that's where our average high temperature sits this time of year. So we're already a little bit past that. So we'll, we are well on our way to another unseasonably warm day here in South Texas. And the clouds that you see out there are really quickly starting to break up. We've had a low deck of clouds, even a little bit of patchy fog around this morning, but we are starting to see more and more sunshine, and that will continue to be true as the afternoon goes on 77 at the airport with a dew point of 67 uh, it is very very muggy out there with our dew point staying very high but our saving grace I think will be that wind out of the south southeast that's keeping the humidity high but that breeze at about 10 to 15 miles per hour will help to keep things moving around pretty nicely today uh, the cloud deck that we had around this morning is rapidly starting to retreat off to the north and to the west and we've got a great view of that on our visible satellite imagery so all of Bear County pretty much now has cleared out and that cloud deck will continue to kind of shrink, get smaller, smaller, and eventually it'll be gone for our counties uh, off to the west that are still seeing some cloud cover at this hour. So a whole lot of sunshine on the way for everyone as we head into the afternoon. Our high res future cast picks that up really nicely. That cloud deck will be gone in the next few hours and we'll see mostly sunny skies for the rest of the day. That means things will be toasty once again this afternoon. Mid to upper 90s for high temperatures well to the south and to the west where things have been sunny for a couple hours already. High temperature right around 88 here in San Antonio. So mid to upper 80s in the hill country as well. Tomorrow will be another warm day, but we'll see temperatures drop a little bit and humidity drop a lot by this weekend. We'll talk more about that and take a look at the latest drought monitor coming up in the full forecast. That'll be along in just a bit. Devin. All right, Katie, thank you. The University of the Incarnate Word football team is focused on school and not football. Larry has the details later in sports. Elton John may not be touring right now, but he is still performing. We're going to hear about his plans for benefit concert. Broadway's biggest night is being postponed because of the coronavirus pandemic. The 74th annual Tony Awards was scheduled to take place June 7th at New York's Radio City Music Hall. Well, it's now postponed after officials say the health and safety of the Broadway community, artists and fans is their main priority. So far, we do not know when it is being rescheduled for, but producers say a new date will be announced once Broadway opens up again. Part of Elton John's North American tour has been postponed because of COVID-19, but fans can still see him perform on TV. The iconic singer is going to be hosting an hour-long benefit special this Sunday night at 9 p.m. to raise money for frontline health care workers and first responders. Fans can expect performances probably mostly at home from Alicia Keys, Billie Eilish, the Backstreet Boys, and three other artists. I think Tim McGraw's in there, too, for this benefit. The proceeds are going to go to Feeding America and First Responders Children's Foundation. Now, this isn't going to be a fancy pants concert. Mm. This is going to be one of those... Uh, you know, we're going to play like like you did on Facebook oh, with your gosh. violin. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. We're, we're supposed to mention that. Oh, yeah. Check it out. <laughs> that it's was on boredom Facebook. at its best. Okay. <laughs> Devin, that was so good. Yeah. Really? yeah. Tell people that. more about that because it's very talented. I, I hadn't played the violin in 10 years. I was going crazy with the boredom. I'm a very social person. I like to get out. So I just decided to pick it up and hopefully it can inspire people to go back to talents yeah. that they used to have or talents that they missed out on or anything that they wanted to do. So we'll see. Great idea. That's wonderful. I, I, I loved it. You're very, very talented. Thank uh, you. Looking outside with live cam, the clouds from this morning starting to clear up. We've got a lot of sunshine heading our way this afternoon. Uh, the biggest issue really in the forecast here lately has been oak. This is our highest reading in several years. So if you feel extra bad today, this is probably why. This is just an incredibly high reading. But if it's any consolation, which it's probably not, uh, we are sitting right smack dab in the middle of the peak of oak season. So it's unfortunate, but not terribly surprising that we've gotten this very high reading uh, today as we sit late March, early April as the peak of oak season. So I hope you're not feeling too bad because of the oak today. I'll be right back with a look at what you can expect this weekend. Things won't be so muggy. Welcome back to the news at noon. Well, I hope we can provide a little bit of good news right here because we've got the latest drought monitor in. This is 
updated each Thursday. So what you're looking at is last week's drought monitor. This was updated on the 19th and we had a big swath of red here from Gonzales and the I-10 corridor down through Atascosa County over to Southern Maverick County indicating extreme drought conditions. And I want you to kind of keep your focus right here where I'm pointing because as we get the latest drought monitor uh, to show up here, you can see a lot of that red has gone away. Now we are not out of the woods by any means here. We've still got severe drought there, uh, but we were able to cut out a big swath of that uh, extreme drought to the southeast of San Antonio with the rainfall late last week. This didn't help everyone out, but that is the best improvement we have seen in several weeks as far as drought is concerned, and we will certainly take it. I wish I had more in the way of rain chances to show you over the next uh, several days, but really just isolated chances of some showers as we get into very early Saturday at the hands of that first front and then early next week on Monday. Another chance at some passing showers for the rest of your Thursday, though no chance of rain in the forecast, just plenty of sunshine, partly the mostly sunny skies over the next several hours. High temperatures, upper 80s, low 90s with a nice breeze hanging around, so it will be warm. It will be muggy again today, but we'll have winds about 10 to 15 miles per hour through a good portion of the afternoon and evening, so that will help that warm muggy air to keep moving around just a bit. And tomorrow will be a very similar day. Another gray start in the morning with low clouds, even another round of some patchy fog possible. Uh, that should definitely not say 88 degrees in the morning. That should be around 68, so I'm going to have to go in and change that. Uh, tomorrow afternoon, though, another warm day with high temperatures, mid to upper 80s. I do expect we'll have more high cloud cover around tomorrow versus today ahead of that front that will be, that will be arriving on Saturday morning. So today, a pretty quiet day, warm in the afternoon. Tomorrow, a bit more in the way of cloud cover, especially those high, thin clouds as that Pacific front will be approaching from the west. So this is a Pacific cool front. What that means is it's coming from the west coast, so it doesn't have cold air behind it, but it does have some nice dry air behind it, and that's what we'll be filtering in on Saturday. So we will have a chance of an isolated shower or non-severe storm early on Saturday. By the afternoon, things are starting to clear out a few showers down on the coastal bend as that front continues to move southeast. But by Saturday afternoon, things are clearing out pretty nicely for most of us, and that drier air will be filtering in through the course of the day. And what this means, dew points in the 30s, that just means the air is going to feel nice and dry. Humidity will be on the low side. Pair that with afternoon temperatures in the upper 70s and low 80s. And this weekend is looking very very nice. So muggy and unseasonably warm for the next couple of days. Then that Pacific front comes through drier air settles in through the weekend. Again, just a very comfortable weekend. Look at your morning low on Sunday, low 50s. That's going to be nice and cool. Uh, things will turn muggy again pretty quickly early next week. A 30% chance of some showers on Monday. We'll have another weak frontal boundary. Looks like it'll come through early on Tuesday. Not going to do a whole lot for us, but it will uh, bring in another round of some slightly drier air. We'll be right back.